I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on who you are, yes. Uh, welcome to SafeNet 7 Traits of Licensing Champions webcast. My name is Nancy Regan. I'm part of SafeNet's marketing organization, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, what we trust will be a really informative and valuable session. So before we get started, uh, I just want to let you know that if you have a question, uh, feel free to use the questions tab at any time. And uh, we'll also be, we'll be addressing those at the end of the session, but also we'll be conducting a live chat via Twitter during today's session. So feel free to follow us there. And we'll also have a recording available after the session that will be posted with the Q&A on SafeNet's licensing live blog as well. As far as today's agenda goes, we'll be covering some key fundamentals and critical features to keep in mind when building and executing a licensing rollout. And for those of you who aren't real familiar with SafeNet, I'll just take a minute and tell you about us. We've been protecting the world's most important information and assets for more than 25 years. And we offer a really broad range of security solutions. And from a software licensing and management perspective, SafeNet offers the strongest, most trusted solutions, protecting more than $10 billion worth of software revenue every year. And we're really proud of that track record, um, and we look forward to sharing some of that expertise with you today. So let's get started. I'd like to introduce Dave Zumillo, Principal Consultant here at SafeNet, who will take it from here. Dave? Great. Uh, thanks, Nancy, and hello to everyone out there. My name is Dave DeMillo, and my role at SafeNet is to um, work with businesses like yours and help them understand the ins and outs of licensing and entitlement management and really help them build successful licensing plans. Um, as you will see today, and I'll talk through in some excruciating detail, having a, a working licensing system and making licensing work for your company are really two different things, and we're certainly going to explore those things in, um, in the time that we have together today. So um, the, the chart that you see here, you know, it really wasn't uh, something to say yay is me, but the takeaway is for you folks to know that I've worked for three major software vendors, not with three major software vendors, four three major software vendors as the licensing owner over the past couple decades. So like many of you, I was the guy who was tasked by the management team with kind of making it all work, meaning I own the business case, I had to come up with licensing policies, um, you know, I had to bring together the various stakeholders across the company from sales and development and IT, you know, put together a plan, try to look at different technologies and craft the licensing model. You know, we had to figure out whether we wanted to build it ourselves or select a vendor. And finally, you know, I was the guy that ended up having to um, head up the implementation. So, you know, my point here is that I know what it's like to be in many of your shoes. I've kind of, you know, I have the battle scars. I've seen the pains firsthand. I kind of get your challenges, and I've got a pretty good feel for what works, what works well, what works not so well, and, you know, the things that could bite you if you don't address them and things to avoid. So we're going to go through uh, much of that stuff today. Um, the final point I want to make on this slide is to talk about SafeNet's unique approach, and I do believe it's unique. Um, so you'll see in the following charts that, you know, and I'll probably say this a dozen times today if I say it once, that um, successful licensing implementations are not about technology, right? It's going to hinge on how well you integrate licensing into your business processes, and it's much more uh, about that than how slick your technology is. So um, I do get a note here from our marketing folks around Twitter that we are indeed using um, uh, uh, doing a Twitter chat today, and we're using the hashtag uh, pound SW licensing. So a little side note for you all. So that's pound SW licensing, and hopefully I got that right. So I want to start by... highlighting a few things that 
I encourage you all to watch out for. So over the years, I've been asked to help um, internal teams and external organizations work with uh, their licensing systems, be it inadequate or try to optimize them. And um, I've, so I've categorized some not so great characteristics on this chart. So if you had asked me why many licensing implementations fail, fail, I'd cite these reasons. So, you know, the first is improper focus and poor planning. So I've seen, I can't tell you how many licensing implementations I've seen where the, the company approaches it as saying, well, this is a development project, right? And some IT guys is going to make the back end work and we'll just issue some license keys and that solves our problem. Okay? Um, and of course that's never the case. And then uh, we'll talk about this as well as uh, I've seen so many cases where the entire system really lacks an owner. Where you know, you've got many stakeholders across the company, but nobody, you know, tail is really on the line to make sure that you have success from from end to end. Okay, and by having an ownership by committee, it's really not the best formula, and it, and it leads to inadequacies. So we're going to talk about that in some uh, some depth today as well. And then if you don't have the best system in the world. Um, and you're not really all that experienced with rolling out a licensing system, you're not probably not um, prepared for the impact in which you could have, right, to your sales teams, to your customers, or vice versa, to your customers. And if you have an impact on your customers, you're going to have an impact on your sales teams, like it or not, uh, which leads to impacts throughout your business. And um, there's a nasty domino effect that, that uh, results. So... Here we go. So what we've done here with the help of our clever and creative marketing people is put together a few traits of teams who have implemented uh, license management solutions successfully. Right. So I want to go through these one by one, and, um, and I'll let Nancy be the one that blows the whistle between the charts. Okay, so let's start with ownership and leadership. We talked about that um, initially. So first and foremost, every team needs a good coach. So the first thing I would recommend for any of you folks out there considering a licensing project or if maybe if you're in the midst of one is tasking someone with making the overall licensing program successful. Empower them to make decisions um, and um, and empower them to be able to make others produce for them. Okay, so most of the time, you know, licensing is this, well, I think I went, I had one chart too fast, sorry. Licensing is this uh, phenomenon, if you will, that sits at the very center of an enterprise-wide Venn diagram, right, because it touches so many organizations across your business. Um, I've seen many companies try to implement licensing by committee, right, where there are so many teams from the pricing folks, sales, order fulfillment, customer support, product management, development, IT, fulfillment, all those folks who have a hand in the pie, right, but um, but they don't usually task somebody right, with running the entire project and making them ultimately accountable for all aspects of the licensing program, right? And what the result of that is, is I've seen, you know, cases where each stakeholder really is focused about their domain, and what happens is they lose sight of the whole customer experience from ordering through customer deployment because they're only looking at their particular piece, right? So, uh, again, I would highly recommend making it somebody's job to make the entire licensing program from you know, the order life cycle through the out-of-the-box experience to uh, the technology and making, you know, the, the client server activations work and all that business with um, business analytics and er uh, all these other things we're going to talk about today. Make it somebody's job and give them accountability and responsibility. So let's keep going.
These charts don't want to behave for me. Here we go. Licensing philosophies and policies. So when I work with businesses implementing licensing, this is one of my favorite topics to drill into, and it's usually something that would have gone overlooked or addressed on the fly, right? But it's really important. So I recommend spending time thinking about and articulating what it is you're really trying to achieve with your license enforcement. Most of the time, it's, it's revenue protection, but there are lots of other things to consider at the corporate level, like, like are you building a framework so that you can deliver new types of sales models, like subscriptions that have a time-based software element to them, right? Are you looking to deliver feature-based licensing where you can actually produce one set of product bits and deliver those to your customers and have your licensing turn on only what the customer bought, right? Are you trying to embrace those types of models? Or maybe you're doing this because you want to get a better grasp around version control around your customer base. So if the customers don't pay their maintenance, they can't upgrade and things like that. So at the highest level, take the time to articulate and prioritize some of these things because the system you build could look quite different depending on your corporate priorities. Right Now, I've used the word philosophy in the slide because I think it's an important thing to get your hands around, right? You know, I recommend talking to your executive team, and I highly recommend engaging your head of sales, right? I've done this in the past, and it's always a fruitful discussion about what you want your corporate license enforcement style to be, right? So, for example, I worked for one company whose corporate policy was to be very piracy conscious, right? And that's fine and good, right? But the resulting policies and the technical behavior of the products reflected this mindset, right? So if the product couldn't find a key in many examples, right, there was no grace period, no rollover, the product simply stopped working by design, right? That's what this company thought was important. However, in the last company I was with, they had a much different mindset. They wanted a much more customer-friendly approach, where they looked at license enforcement as a, a set of tools to guide the customer to purchase what they really needed and to prevent them from inadvertently getting themselves out of compliance, right? There's a big difference between those two mindsets, and then inherently there's a big difference between those two implementations, right, and the policies around them. So I highly recommend spending time trying to figure out what you really want to achieve, you know, what do you want those policies um, to be, right? So speaking of policies, you know, you're going to be faced with deciding how your technology and your employees will handle a wide variety of situations, right? So, for example, how are you going to handle the case when a customer wants an extra set of license keys for their disaster recovery environment, right? Some of you may want to sell those customers more licenses, some of you may want to give those customers those extra licenses for free, right? What exactly is your policy going to be? Because some of your customers are going to ask and you need an answer, right? Another example is how do you want your salespeople to behave, right, when they pick up a phone and they have a call from a customer who has a hard time getting a key and wants a key and they don't have – they don't have the email that you sent out. They're not listed as a contact in the entitlement system. Are you going to help them? Do you want to send them to your sales rep? What are those policies, right? So, by the way, these are two really good examples of the point I was trying to make earlier around integrating licensing into your business, right? The decisions that you make in those two examples have nothing to do with technology, really, and they have everything to do with business process. So... Um, think about these types of situations, right? Come up with the policies that work for you. Document them uh, for your internal teams at a minimum as well as for your customers. Okay, so we talked about um, ownership. We've talked about licensing philosophies and policies, kind of working from the top down. And boom. now we get into the good stuff. Focusing on your requirements. So I absolutely cannot stress this item enough as it will likely make or break your success, right? So you folks who have worked in product management and project management, 
um, probably know firsthand that teams who invest in good requirement gathering, use case definition, good planning, have at least you know three to four times the success rate than teams who gather requirements on the fly. That's just an industry fact. So my experience in this area says that the licensing project team often tends to focus on you know, the happy day workflow. That's a new customer buys, you know, one new license, and that's about it, right? So um, uh, that the reality is that case is, is usually pretty easy. So the order goes in the system, flows down through fulfillment, something comes out on the back end, the customer gets that and, and you know, activates their software. But, you know, there's certainly some challenges in there, but the reality is that there's lots of other things you need to think about that are a lot more complex and will bite you in the long run if you don't, right? So the challenges come when you have customers with fluid data, and you will have customers with fluid data. Right, so how are you going to handle cases where the customer has add-on orders and wants to make sure their second order is uh, works hand-in-hand -hand with their first order and they show up on the same site and things like that, right? How are you going to handle customers who want to migrate products or trade in uh, product A that they purchased two years ago for product B? Okay, how are you going to swap products for them? How are you going to handle the case where your business needs to end of life product X and give your entire install base who bought it product Z. How's that all going to work, right? If you're if you want your uh, license enforcement system to to control version, how are you going to handle the case where the customer say bought 100 licenses on on one order but wants to only renew maintenance for 20, right? How does that case uh, how is that represented in your system? So, you know, my advice here isn't just to you know, well, my point isn't that we need to go through all these things in detail, certainly not today, but my advice is don't just look at this as a system that hands out license keys, right? Think of the many ways in which your customers do, do, do business with you, right? Embrace them, the devils in the details around the use cases in which your customers interface with you, right? They often don't just buy one product, they buy many products, they may buy add-on orders, they may move those licenses around from site to site. You gotta get your hands around them, uh, write them down, document them, and design a system around those critical use cases. Now, when I talk about requirements, you also need to consider the requirements not only of your, your customers and those ordering scenarios, but the requirements for your entire company, okay? Now, customer support will likely have their own requirements, as will your sales teams, right? So you need to capture and embrace those as well. Uh, support requirements may be that, you know, um, you know, the customer must be able to get their license key without having to call in. Um, you know, there must be some self-help. There must be X, Y, Z. As with your sales teams, right? They're, they're probably going to have some pretty, um, pretty visible requirements or pretty uh, strong requirements around um, making sure that there's somebody in the back end to help those customers when they have some issues, okay? And they have some flexibility to help those customers. Okay, uh, as you start planning, right, what you're really doing here is defining your company's licensing program, right? It's not about technology. It's about the entire program. And let me uh, show you what I mean by that. So in this slide here, although there's some, some rather small text, um, what I've done is I've outlined 13 different things that your licensing project leader will have to deal with as they uh, define your uh, project life cycle, right? So from from uh, your corporate licensing vision to your philosophies and policies, now how deep you dive, dive into these is, you know, remains an open question, but you will deal with some policies, model definition, requirements, use cases, technology. You'll run the entire gamut, okay? Now the tendency here is for companies to think of this 
as a technical problem, right? And gravitate to these items that I've highlighted in blue, where um, they, you know, quickly jump to trying to figure out some technology, select a vendor, put together an architecture and, you know, basic use cases, develop an engineering plan, and build it, right? But on the right side of this chart, you kind of see the reality where, where much of the work is around business processes. I can't stress this enough, getting your hands around them, building the right workflows, and making sure your people know what to do in certain situations, right? So, I, you know, my mantra is that technology alone is not going to solve your problem. Um, it, it's really good business focus. Let's keep going here. So the fourth thing that I want to talk about today, um, we, we call it nurture and develop your talent, but that really focuses on on the backbone of your um, your licensing system. That's going to be your data and your data structure. And my first rule of entitlement management and licensing, although our nice marketing people have a nicer graphic than I came up with, is garbage in equals garbage out. Okay, so licensing systems generally are data driven. Right. And if you don't have the right data in the system, you know, the customer generally isn't going to get the right thing on the other end. So, you know, keep in mind that your license keys and your activations really are the one piece of technology that represents what your customer bought. Okay? So the errors in your data become much more visible with a license enforcement system. And it really pays to pay some focus on how that data is structured in your system and the quality of it therein. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, the last company I was with, uh, we had some, you know, fairly poor processes around um, the, the co uh, customer definition. So between the, the, re the relationship between a customer number and site numbers and rules around when to create a new site number and so forth. So if you think about it, um, your a license key is typically associated with an order. The order is associated with a site, and the site is usually associated with a customer. So these processes that were in place, a lack of process, uh, resulted in the company making a new site every time the customer bought something. So we had one major customer with about 500 different sites. And how that netted out was that they had a real hard time understanding what they bought, when they bought it, who bought it, how many copies, and so forth. And their their visibility through the license management system was really poor, simply because of the way the data was structured and the quality of the data therein. Okay, so let's uh, keep going here and talk a little bit more about data, okay? So um, as I mentioned before, one thing I really recommend uh, realizing is that your customer, da customer data generally is dynamic, particularly with your bigger customers, right? So you have to think about what happens what do you want to have happen with the original sales order when a customer calls up and says, okay, I need to move that entitlement from site to site, meaning I bought 200 licenses in Seattle and I need to take 60 of those and move them to our, our site down in Florida. All right, how do you want to handle that? Do you want to um, make two separate entitlements? Do you want to decrement uh, 40 off the original and, and give them to the, another site? Um, what happens when the customer has has um, generated activations or generate, generated license keys against those uh, those initial um, license purchases? How do you want to handle those? As I mentioned before, you know what happens when a customer does a trade up. So when they bought product A and then they all of a sudden they want to trade it in for better product, product B. How are you going to handle that? How do you want your licensing system to handle that? Okay. How do you want your customer's maintenance status reflected in your licensing system? Okay. Um, and then finally, around data integrity, I've seen uh, a lot of a lot of executives play the game of not it when this comes up. You know, when a customer calls up 
and they say that they can't understand what they bought. Okay, whose job is it to fix it? Is it tech support? Generally, they don't want it. Sales, their job is to sell software. So a lot of times they end up looking at each other. So, you know, who has permission to change the data when, say, one of your biggest customers may call you and say, I, I just can't understand what I, what I bought, or you gave us 30 sites, I need them collapsed down into three, and um, I need all these, these orders cleaned up from the past, right? These are the types of things you have to think about, and the better job you do with your data, those things get reflected through your licensing system, and your, your customers can take advantage of that. Okay, next chart. It's all about the fans. So, you know, it, like I mentioned before, when you have a team who's focused on their particular piece of the puzzle, sometimes um, they forget about the customer's end-to-end -end experience, right? So a lot of times uh, the ordering people say, well, okay, this is, you know, my job is to make sure I can place the orders, and then you've got the folks in development saying, okay, my job is to make sure the software behaves this way. But what exactly is your customer going to get out of the box? When they place an order, exactly what do they see, right? Do you have enough self-help? Are you really looking at, you know, the end-to-end -end process from the time they place an order to the time they deploy the software? Okay, and I really recommend looking at that closely. Um, because, you know, you never want customers who spend a lot of money on your products and have a hard time, you know, with the out-of-the-box experience. Now, um, I've also worked in uh, customer support and I've had the licensing team report into me, and uh, I've seen a lot of tech support calls escalate in my days, but for whatever reason, uh, no calls escalate as fast as licensing calls when you have a customer that's just made a major investment in your company and can't get up and running, right? So really take the time and uh, and look at your out-of-the-box experience to make sure it's clean, that there's self-help, and uh, your field teams know what to do as well. So speaking of field teams, the other things to think about regarding users are your non-customers, Okay, how are your internal people going to get license keys, right? And by internal people, it's, it's your support teams, your development teams, your folks in the field, right, your sales reps, your technical sales reps, your partners, right? So you have uh, universities. A lot of times those users don't exactly pay for the software, but they need to take, uh, they need, uh, to take delivery of them. So how are you going to handle all those? And, um, you know, just like anything else, the better job you do there, the smoother things will end up in the long run. Let's flip ahead to the chart. Number six, review team statistics, right? Good business analytics and insight, right? So some things to think about as you're developing your, your licensing system and your programs, right, is do you know what your customers bought? Do they know what they bought? Can you leverage the licensing system to help them, them meaning your, your customers and your product managers, understand what, what's been sold, right, when they bought it, how many they bought, what's been activated, um, and what's still on the shelf. Now, that last item is, is, can be pretty interesting, and I've seen teams um, do some nice things around licensing to help both customers and their field teams understand what they bought, right, what keys have been generated, and what's left to generate. So you can have field teams try to identify shelfware, and shelfware for your customers generally means that there could be some kind of a problem that you may want your sales teams checking on with that customer, right? So if they bought, say, you know, 200 licenses and nine months have gone by and they haven't activated any of them, that could be uh, an indicator for you that this customer's right for services engagement or something's wrong where they're having trouble getting up and running. On the flip side, if your sales teams can um, look at your business analytics and your reporting and see that that same customer has generated or activated all those licenses over time, it may be a good opportunity to have a healthy conversation with the customer 
you know, and talk about buying more. Okay, and um, and leveraging your licensing system can lead you along that way. Okay, and then the last thing is step back every year or so, probably every year, year and a half, somewhere in there, uh, and what we call study your own game film. Right? Is your licensing system meeting your goals? If your if your goal was revenue protection, is it working? Right. Uh, an easy way of finding out is simply asking your sales teams, right, is this system working? Are your customers buying the licenses that they think they need or you think they need because they you put some kind of a system in place um, that kind of forces them to do the right thing? Is that working? Are your customers more compliant with um, a license enforcement system than without Right. If you implemented version control, how are your renewal rates doing? Right. Does your tech support people still find that they have customers calling in using old versions of the software that are no longer on support and they shouldn't be calling in at all? Right. Or any of those things happening? Um, you know. And do you have do you have better insight because of your license enforcement system? Meaning, do your sales reps have a better idea of what's happening within their accounts? Do um, do your product managers know what you know across the customer base, what they've sold for products, what those customers are using for products, and, and perhaps even where those products have been deployed? Right? Do you do you get that kind of value out of your system? Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and um, like I said, every year, year and a half, an exercise like this can be a little painful, but it's always valuable. And um, speaking of revenue protection, you know, I, I've done those types of reviews, you know, for a decade plus, and sales reps always, I mean, and I mean always, have come back saying, you know, the good license enforcement system does its job. The customers are buying the licenses they need because of it. If they took, if we took it out, um, the sales reps you know, think that they wouldn't make their numbers. So it's adding value in the area of license protection um, and compliance. Right, so I really recommend conducting these business reviews, even if it's just an internal team. You don't have to roll up to management unless, you know, of course you, you see value in that. But just having that uh, that backbone will help you make decisions moving ahead. Okay, so I just want to summarize um, the things that we talked about before, the, the high points, right? One is get an owner who will be responsible and accountable for the entire program, not just the technology, the entire program, okay? Define and publish your policies and your philosophies. Invest in solid requirements and use case definition. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, um, right? Uh, sometimes keeping your data as clean as possible is really painful. I understand it, but it, it typically pays off if you make that investment. Um, you know, focus on your customer experience from ordering through deployment. Focus on your internal users, right, from the time that they uh, they need a key, from the time they deploy and getting help and all that good stuff. Um, after you have your system up and running, um, produce valuable um, business insight, right? Analytics for your internal teams, for your sales reps, for your product managers, and then you know step back every uh, every year or so and conduct a healthy business review, just to make sure that you're you're still meeting uh, the business needs. Okay. Boy, these slides are flying by here. Really sensitive. One more time. Okay, so speaking of um, licensing planning and uh, requirement gathering and those types of things, I will, would like to highlight that SafeNet um, has three workshops that we offer to our customers. The first two are, you know, Typically, three-day uh, engagements where we'll start at the highest level and we'll get our hands around these things that we've talked about today from uh, your organization, trying to understand really what you're trying to do. And what we'll do is, over the course of a few days, is piece together um, your high-level program. Okay, 
try to look at your ordering use cases, what all of those different teams around your enterprise need out of licensing. Um, we'll look at uh, workflows and things like that. And at the end, sort of walk away with a plan that you can execute. Um, we've got two uh, offerings in this area. One is around, uh, we call it Licensing 101, so there's some best practices information in there. But it's really for businesses that are brand new to licensing. It's the first time you've been down this path, and we try to coach you through uh, some healthy things there. And then we see a lot of customers who um, – who are not new to licensing, maybe they have a homegrown system and they're trying to mature it, um, maybe you have one vendor and you want to move to a different vendor, or you need to embrace new ways of selling your product like subscriptions or, or SaaS or uh, just other ways of doing business and you want to enhance your system. So we offer workshops around that where I'll, I'll come in and, and put together a, an architecture that meets your needs. And then underneath both of those, um, we offer... Uh, really an in-depth planning engagement where it's a multi-week affair and we'll, you know, get right down into the details of how the entire system should work. So I encourage, if you're broaching licensing at all, I encourage you to, uh, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to your sales rep um, and think about either a licensing 101 engagement or uh, the appraisal and optimization engagement. Uh, high value and uh, you know, you may be stuck with me for three days, but I guarantee you'll get something out of it. That's that's pretty good. And then, uh, lastly, I think uh, at this point we'll do a Q and A. And Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is going to be interactive through um, through the website. And I see a couple questions in here. Yeah, there are a couple questions in the queue. You can just click that. Okay, so. Um, the first question is who I recommend being or what, what organization would I recommend having a licensing owner come from? Um, good question. I've been asked this in the past and, uh, and I maintain the same answer, right? The licensing business owner, in my experience, should be somebody who has historically been close to your customers, right? Uh, I love all you guys out there in development and IT, but the best ones tend to be the ones who can who really understand what your customers do, how they do business with you, uh, the pains that they go through. Um, so product managers or uh, even somebody from tech support who, who have a really good feel for how your customers behave tend to do the best jobs uh, around defining licensing programs. So that's what, uh, what my experience says. Uh, second question was around uh, – one second. There are a couple questions here. Uh, any special considerations with the plan for and with international users? Yes. Um, the When you think about the out-of-the-box experience, uh, this is where I recommend – you know, considering your international user population, right? Now, you've had some companies, um, some companies I've worked with decided, you know, English only and, you know, generally the customers who who uh, receive the software can, can deal with English. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can localize even the out-of-the-box experience, um, that uh, that's always helpful to get those customers up and running. Uh, another thing that I did in my last company that ended up being really good, really of high value globally, was we put together some um, some out of the box uh, customer videos that were localized. So you know, it's a quick two or three minute video to show the customer kind of how the licensing works. Um, you know what they should expect to receive from um, from the vendor when they place the order, and that stuff worked great. Easy to localize, easy to produce, easy to get those links in front of your customers, and um, and keep them up and running. And uh, lastly, let's see. Um, the question is: We have a, an expensive product that is low volume. What approach do you recommend for handling a customer when they lose a key? That's a really good question. So this is where I. Um, I recommend talking to your your sales teams. 
And what I've found in the past, um, particularly when I worked for IBM, was um, letting your sales teams own the account, right? It's their customer. Um, and they generally, if you've got, you know, high volume, sorry, low low volume, high cost, right, talk to your sales reps and see how they feel about it, right? They may want to make the customer, depending on the situation, they want to make, may make the customer buy something else. Um, or uh, the sales reps may think, hey, you know, Generally, we have honest customers trying to do honest business. Just help them out. Note in the system that they we gave them another key. Let me know as the sales reps that I gave another key. To, you gave another key to them. Um, so this is a really good example of what I was talking about with licensing philosophies and policies, right? Talk to your sales guys. What do you guys really want to achieve, right? Do, you, do we want to be that strict? Or do we want to um, put something in place that just helps the customer do the right thing? Leave it up to your sales guys to um, to control what happens within their customers. I think generally they appreciate that, and generally that, that approach works pretty well. Okay, uh, next question. How do you involve the finance group with the development of its licensing game plan? Another excellent question. Um, this... Uh, this one is important, particularly around RevRec, and I think I had it on my slides, but I didn't, uh, I didn't address it. So, um, you know, CFOs and the, the, their corresponding accounting teams get really uh, nervous around, around revenue recognition and end of quarter processes. Absolutely, positively, take the time while you're planning. Um, in architecting the entire system to sit down with your CFO or whomever um, is in that type of situation that can make decisions from a finance perspective and go through it, All right? Now, when I worked for IBM, we were actually able to leverage the licensing system to remove a ton, and I mean a ton, of um, end of quarter, you know, what we call gymnastics around product delivery because we had a pretty slick way of delivering license keys and making sure that um, we could prove that the customer had access to the software at the end of the quarter. So, you know, the question here is, is when to involve them, you know, as soon as possible when you start, uh, when you start designing. Let's see, is there a way to have portability of using a dongle? Um, a sufficient way to move a license from PC from PC to PC without a dongle. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I didn't want this uh, presentation to be a product pitch. I will say that SafeNet's uh, entitlement management tool called EMS um, has the capability of uh, letting customers, right, giving you the ISV control over if you want to let your customers move keys from machine to machine, right, if you want to do that, again, going back to policies, philosophies, right, if you want to allow your end users to do that. And if you do, um, it actually allows them to, to make that transaction, if you will, without having to call somebody, without having to call their sales rep, or without having to call into support, right. It um, allows them to do that um, interactively just with, with technology rather than with a person. Um, can we download these slides? Boy, these questions are great. I, I think, Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, what we're going to do is um, deliver a – everybody on the call will receive a, an email that has a link to the replay. If anybody wants the slides in particular, why don't you folks uh, reach out to me directly? Um, and I think if I move my questions panel out of the way – can't see it. Uh, I think you can see my email address on the screen, although I can't. All I see is questions right now. So if anybody needs a, a copy of these slides, why don't you email me directly, and and uh, I can I can manage that with you. Um, and we'll also, be also that then, on our website yeah, as yeah. well. The Sorry, gonna, it's already going to be it's going to be on the website as well. The the slides as well as the replay. Correct. Okay, great. Um, let's see, and I think that's, that's it for now for questions. So, um, 
just to, just to recap, any folks out there, anybody out there that wants to talk more about um, licensing in your program, feel free to contact me directly. Um, I really encourage you to think about maybe a, a workshop because because uh, we do really get to some some tasty things in those sessions. Um, there's some information here about our blog and following us on uh, licensing live. Uh, as well as Twitter. So that's it from my perspective. Nancy, I'm going to hand the baton back over to you. Great. Well, thank you, Dave. Uh, and at this point, um, that is going to conclude our session today. And you'll be receiving a, um, an email um, following up with a link to the recorded session as well. Um, and you can get to us through Licensing Live blog, you can get to us through our website, uh, or through Dave's email as well. Thank you so much.